Okay, there you go. There we go. All right. Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited that we get to chat with Nora today. It is morning for me. It is evening for you. So I'll say both good morning and good evening uh, <laughs> to students joining us. I had such a fun time meeting Nora at the World Esports Championships. Uh, I was going to say earlier this year, it was at the tail end of 2022. And um, it just was such a, you were a breath of fresh air. I love your passion for esports and for women in gaming. So I can't wait to dive in. I'm already going too far. <laughs> I'll wait and uh, let you introduce yourself. Actually, first, Carolyn, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself since you're from the esports team at NASF also. <laughs> Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Carolyn Navarro, and I'm uh, executive assistant with NASEF. So welcome on. Excited to have Nora here with us. Perfect. Thank and you. I think I forgot to say my my job title. I am the chief marketing officer at NASEF. Um, and so we're going to just dive right in. This uh, stream is intended for students who are participating in our MENA Craft program. And MENA Craft is a virtual exchange program. We have students joining from the United States, from several states in the United States, as well as joining from um, Middle East, North Africa region. And this is why uh, we're excited to have Nora here with us today. So Nora, maybe just take a second and tell us about yourself and your streaming and the games you play and all of that. Okay, my name is Hen, but you can call me Nora. Everyone Hen. call me Nora. Yes, <laughs> but okay. um, everyone call call me Nora. Um, I'm um, I'm a streamer and um, a manager for uh, several teams and. Um, what else? I'm an athlete committee in IESF, and that's it. And my stream, I play um, a lot of games, not just one game. So I play PUBG Mobile and Call of Duty and um, Overwatch, a lot of games. But the main games for me as a competitive is PUBG Mobile. Okay. And you had you were at the World Esports Championships with the PUBG Mobile team. Yes. yes. And how did they do? Um, and not good, but it's my first time uh, to be representative of my national team of Egypt. But um, I think uh, it's different experience as a streamer. Um, first time to be a pro player and to be on the national team and compete in uh, in such a huge tournament in Bali. That, like you see, I I had the um. Yeah, difficult days, but it's my will. Uh, I will be the the first, the only girl in the in the tournament, in the whole tournament, and I find the support to be the only girl in the national team of Egypt to compete in PUBG Mobile. How did you feel as the only girl competing? Oh, <laughs> it's it's so great, but sometimes I had a bad comment and. Um, toxicity things I had first day in the competition I was crying in my room that I have so many uh, positive negative comment and um, why girl you, you, your place in the kitchen not not in this tournament not in in this competition uh, we have boys boys can uh, represent the the national team of Egypt better than the girls it's not your place. And I was disappointed. And I didn't find someone to support me in this uh, place or in Bali. Even my team not support me as well, because they see that there is a better than me in this, uh, in this situation or in this position. But after day one, we do very well. We have very... Um, Two chicken dinner, back-to-back uh, -back chicken dinner, and we did very, very well, yes. And after this day, they look different for, for me, and they say that, no, we need you in the team. But it's it's very, very, very different experience about me to be a streamer and turn into pro player and represent the national team of Egypt. Mm -hmm. 
that feels like a lot of weight on the shoulders of one person. Yes. Yes. Um, first, I'm sorry that you had to go through that experience. You are a very strong woman. And so, of course, you persisted and you proved yourself. But yes. um, it's a difficult thing, isn't it, to be put in a position of having to prove yourself before you even start? Yeah, it's very, very difficult for me uh, and have a difficult time to approve that I'm good. I can be in this uh, position. I can be in the team. I can be representative of my team, my country, as well, like you, like the boys. But in MENA region or in Middle East, it's not acceptable to be to have girls in, in games or esports. It's um, it's very, very difficult to understand that girls can be in this, can compete in esport, can be with the men teams, not just for a girls team. I don't want to be in the girls team. I want to be in the men team. I can compete men. I can approve that I'm good, just like like the boys. Yeah, but we we need more time a lot of time to accept this in in our culture do not accept that this this idea that girls can be in the in the main team and can compete like the boys and not just like in in girls team right so i've heard um students in nasaf there are sort of two different opinions depending on the school or where you are and, um, you know, it's, uh, I think that different students have different opinions. So some want to be on an all girls team and some want to be on a team that's mixed girls and boys. And for us, we like to just see whatever works at your school, whatever works for your team, that's what we hope will happen. Um, and, I'm hopeful for that for you as well in Egypt. And I see you, Nora, you are going to make changes there. So uh, can you, what would your vision be for girls in esports in the Middle East? If you looked ahead five years from now, what do you hope will have changed? Wow, five years from now, it's, it's totally will be different because now uh, today, girls see like me and the other girls streamers and compete in another uh, teams that I hope that girls inspire from us to be in this field, to be in esports, to compete even in girls team, but not afraid from the uh, negative comment and um, not afraid to fool. Everyone will fail, everyone will fail. Uh, you first time you will fail, second time you will fail, third time you will succeed, and you will reach your goal in be to be in esport, even in girls team. But I don't want to be girls just in girls team. I want them in uh, men's team and compete against boys, not against just girls. I want them to compete against boys. I know girls is more perfect to be in the girl in the men's teams and i want to see them but the step we take in in middle east for the girls is not a big steps for the girls it's not a big support for uh the girls but i see it will be changed by the years and um, after five years, I will see just two girls, uh, four girls in in this in esport compete uh, with main teams, but not too much because our culture is very difficult for the girls. It's very very difficult for the girls. I, I hope it's change. Um, I hope that everyone see that the girls have the rights to be in this field, and um, the girls have to be in this field. It's not not the kitchen, not not this not place. But if I want to be in the kitchen, I will be. If I right. want to be a pilot, I will be a pilot. 
if I want to be a gamer, I will be a gamer. It's not your decision. It's my decision. It's my will. It's my goal. It's my what I love in this field. I love esports. I love to be a gamer. I love to be pro player. I love to be that compete in this tournament and be um, what I love, what I have the passion in esports. But we have a lot of work a lot of work to be after five years to see the, the culture it changed from what they see us in esport. Mm -hmm. I agree. I Nora, I love your passion. And this is why I think you and I connected so closely when we first met each other, because we both see potential. And NASAF, we stand with you in your efforts to make girls more equal in gaming. And it's not the same culture here in the United States, but we do still have girls who come up against the same kind of comments. And that um, that is why my vision for NASEF, because we work with students in K-12, my vision is that we start to teach the younger students, this is how you behave in esports. And that's why, for example, we have a code of conduct for every one of our clubs and they adopt a code of conduct. And we say, sit down as students at the beginning of the year and make a club charter and talk about what is the atmosphere in your club going to be like. And they're doing this with mentors that are teachers who are going to help shape their vision and help expand and their mind as to who should be in the room. And I always tell students, look around the room and then look at your school campus. And if they don't match up, you need to go invite some people and bring them in here. Because if your room is full of only boys and there are girls on your campus, guess what? There are some girls out there who want a game, bring them in. And I think if we can, um, we call it being an ally, right? Not just that I would be okay with boys or girls playing, but that if I'm a boy, I would be an ally for girls and invite you and bring you in and make you feel comfortable. Or, you know, as a girl, if I see a boy who, for whatever reason, is uncomfortable coming into the club, that I would be the one to reach out and say, hey, let's do this together. To, so that I don't just do the right things myself. I also encourage others to do the right thing as well. And so um, starting in the United States, but now NASEF has clubs all around the world. And here we are with our Mina Craft program happening in Egypt. So our goal is that this philosophy will spread around the world and that esports will become, you know, this, this common ground for, you know, boys, girls, men, women, everyone, whoever you are, whatever your interests, that we could all game together, have a community and a global community, which is so fun. So I'm just going to go into that for a second because we met in Bali, Indonesia at the World Esports Championships, and there were athletes from 105 countries there. Um, describe, describe that melting pot of all those different cultures. What was it like to experience that? Oh, it's, it's, very different experience for me it's my first time to be um in place like this and uh, uh meet uh, a lot of people from another countries but i had a lot of problem in there um some people can connect with me uh just when i made someone and the breakfast we take a breakfast just a smile let a smile like this he just smiled for me he start to connect but there's some people like what what she want from us they didn't want to connect i'm here for competitive and to make a new friends and new a new culture i want i like to have this i am um, esport is for this for making new friends for make a, to know a new culture um some people want uh unfriendly at all <laughs> but mm -hmm. some people was friendly and I know a lot of people. It's big, big experience for me. Um, it's uh, change for change something in me. Um, at the athlete committee, I have to speak to the players to vote for me. I go to players I don't know and speak 
um, about myself. And uh, I said that for them, I will do everything for you uh, as an athlete committee. And um, this is very, very, very big to me. I'm really shy at the 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 real life, but esports changed a lot of things in me. Like Bali, I speak to many players to vote for me and everyone vote for me and I uh, be athlete committee now and it's very very different I attend the the workshop in NASIV that it's totally useful for me I today uh, teach the, the people the ecosystem and the organization where my organization I start to work with the ecosystem that I study it in in the workshop that I attend in uh, in Bali it's it changed a lot of things for me it's very very step a big step for me and really really I want to repeat this this experience again that's wonderful um, Carolyn, if you can just allow me to share screen for a second, I thought I would share the graphic that Nora is talking about with the yes. ecosystem, uh, because this is something that we um, really try to have students understand, and that is that there is this ecosystem of career opportunities. And if you want to see this and learn about this yourself, I'm on the NACEF website, which is nacef.org, and then um, on the curriculum page, so under learn and then curriculum. And you can see this is how we approach esports as a platform for learning. And that is that players and games are at the center, but then look at all these career possibilities from strategists to content, content creators, which there you are, Nora, front and center right there, content creators, shoutcaster, streamer, uh, but it also includes software developers or entrepreneurs. And we just really want students to see that there is an opportunity for them, regardless of the area that they're interested in or the career path that they want to choose. And um, we offer, uh, through NACEF, all kinds of opportunities for students to participate in these. And I'll tell you really quickly about one that we have going on now. It's called a Beyond the Game Challenge. Um, and in Beyond the Game Challenges, it's just what it sounds like. We want you to be able to experience challenges and competition beyond the game that you play in. And so I'm going to share my screen again so you can see um, the Beyond the Game Challenges that we have going on. We have one that's to create a documentary. Why do you play esports? Create a video and tell us about it. And we did this in the fall and the videos that we received were amazing. And you know what? I think one student said it was, you know, it was for the money. <laughs> it was to play the game and get the money. <laughs> Although even she, and it was a girl, which I loved. It was a girl, but even she said, you know, it was amazing to get a scholarship. Who would have thought I could get a scholarship playing games, right? So it was mind opening for her. So we're looking for people to uh, create videos where they talk about why they play esports. And then we have two other um, challenges we're that are call it that are about broadcasting and streaming. And we've actually put together a course that helps students learn how to do broadcasting, how to use OBS, how to do behind the scenes work, and then how to actually be on air talent. And so students can um, develop these videos. We want them to stream a game, shoutcast, whatever they want to do, and then submit a link to that so we can see it. And we're offering grants to schools for students who participate. And again, just trying to really um, open up their eyes to this ecosystem that you described, um, Nora. So uh, yes, we're very passionate about that ecosystem also. <laughs> um, so just tell me a little bit about your day-to-day. -day. We've talked a lot about the experience in Bali and what it's like being a woman in esports, but you are a streamer and this is your job, right? So tell us, how do you, how do you live? How do you prepare? What goes into your work as a streamer? Oh, as a streamer, um, I started streaming for five years ago and my days work like I uh, sleep all the day and 
just <laughs> awake all the night and sleep another day it's it's so weird but i i want to change this but but i can't i really i can't all my uh, friends be in the in the night and we just go to chatting and competitive and do all of these things just uh, in the night and my stream always in the night not in the morning in the morning i will sleep at all the day i sleep but uh i make that um, six hour in the day uh streaming and wow. yeah and three hours for recording videos and um, had um different games to make just videos to my channel and stream for six hours I was partnered for Facebook for three years and now I, I canceled this contract now, but now I'm in Trovo and in Twitch and in Facebook. I have to go stream for this three platform in Trovo and Facebook and Twitch. Um, six hours a day, I don't have time to sleep. Yes these days i don't have time really and my job new job as a athlete committee like you know um now i um the qualifiers in the national qualifiers and the regional qualifiers for the next tournament and we have a lot of work to do in this competition and a manager for another teams um, I have three teams manager for a different uh, uh, games like uh, Owner of King and CSGO and Valorant. And I am an um, owner of organization uh, and I have a lot of work, you know. And I had really, really, I don't have any time to sleep, but I make a schedule to my day for my stream. And for my work as an athlete committee and as a manager, as an organizer, uh, organizer, but it's so exhausted for me. But I focus for to just serve all these works as a streamer. I don't want to quit stream. I don't quit uh, manager. I don't quit anything of this. I enjoy what I'm doing as a streamer, as a manager, as an organizer, as everything. Right. I can see the smile in your eyes as you describe your grueling schedule. So I can tell it's a commitment that you have. Um, so you described planning. I just want to make sure that we dispel any myths that you can just hop in front of a camera and stream for six hours without doing a lot of background work. Right. So yes. can you can you describe a little bit what goes into the process of preparing for a stream? Uh, first, I uh, get get my team because uh, if I will play Overwatch, I need five five player. Uh, we uh, start to practice before the 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 stream, and after this, we start stream. Get I was using OBS and set all of this this thing. Uh, we choose the platform if it's. Twitch or Facebook or Trovo. And after this, we uh, make just uh, five minutes starting soon to get all, more audience to watch us. And after this, we start our streaming. Uh, we make a lot of fun more than competitive, but sometimes we need to make competitive just for the audience that see us they want to learn something from us uh, as a streamer some some audience want to know tips for how i play how i uh, compete how i uh, win my matches and uh, we need to make a competitive and make fun uh, I don't want anyone to get bored when they uh, saw us when we play. I want some action, competitive and fun. As a girls, everyone said, go to the kitchen. You're, go <laughs> You're placed in the kitchen. Uh, go to make a makeup. We put makeup or, or like this. I put makeup, <laughs> but I also gamer, yes. I love what you said earlier. 
Yes, if I choose to go in the kitchen, absolutely. But you're not going to tell me to do that. That's my yeah. choice. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I love that. Well, and it's good to hear um, that you're trying to combine all those things, the fun of gaming, the preparation, the practice, being a good team, giving tips, all of those things. That's something that as we are working with students, also, we try to have them learn a blend. We have a healthy gaming outline. So we want them to learn about eating well, sorry, Nora, but sleeping well, all of the things that go into being healthy for your lifetime. You can get away with that low sleep now, but let me tell you, when you get to be my age, uh uh-uh, you're going to need a little bit more sleep to make it through the day. But those things are really important to be a good, well-rounded gamer. And so those are things that we emphasize also um, through NASF. Um, so uh, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions that are related to Mina Craft. And I didn't give you any preparation for these. So this will be interesting to see what you say. But in Mina Craft, we have a couple of challenges where students build something in Minecraft that is important to them or to their country or culture, and then they share it. And um, the first challenge is the story of you. And I feel like we've gotten to know you really well. Although let's see, we did say favorite food. So tell, tell me your favorite food. What is your favorite food? We want to learn a little bit about you too. Oh, my favorite food is Egyptian. You will not uh, know it. Koshari. Mm. Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I I talked right at the same moment as you. So just say it again so I can hear. Koshari. Koshari. Oh, look. Sawa, yeah. who is in, she says it's her favorite food too. Koshari. Yeah, okay. Koshari. It's, it's very popular in here. It's very, very good. What is in it? Uh, it's um, pasta and rice and uh, just tomato and uh, onion Ooh. and all those things makes it together and yeah. yeah it's very spicy i just looked up a picture and it looks delicious oh yeah share the it's picture, a- Caroline. <laughs> can you share it yes <laughs> really delicious <Let> me. Yes. <laughs> sorry oh that's okay when we met again i will make uh kosher i will go to kitchen and i will make uh, okay kosher. awesome yeah thank you <laughs> thank you um i don't know it is it not sharing? That's okay. Yeah, I can't see it. I don't know which one it is. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that's it. Koshari. Koshari. Now you've got me curious. Maybe you can. Yes, you should oh, look it up. Oh, it's with a Y. Oh, you I. Koshari. Koshari. Oh, wow. I. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. really good. Wooey. Okay, I just have to share for a second so we all see. This is, you know, Google, so there are 18 different versions yeah. of it yeah, yeah the, oh, in the so top yummy. is it's onion uh-huh. in the top and rice and tomato and a lot of scenes mix it together uh just in egypt kosheri made in just yes. in egypt yeah. of course i tried to show the picture and it's taking forever to load so never mind yeah <laughs> we'll just look at this one yeah so rice and yeah. pasta together i love it yeah yeah Okay. So you like a healthy food. I, you know, some people like dessert. I like my favorite food is kind of weird. I really love green beans. I really love green beans. What can I say? But deep fried is just as good as any other. So, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily the healthy one. It's not healthy. Yeah. Not healthy. (laughs) Yes. So that's the story of you is tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, and so for students who are participating in Mina Craft, they can either draw a picture, they can write a blog, they can build in Minecraft, and it's a Minecraft challenge. So of course, many of them want to build it in Minecraft. And then the second mm. challenge is about a monument and the flag. And so we ask students to use Minecraft and build a replica of a monument in their city or country. So Nora, if you were to build a monument, for Egypt, what would you, what would you make? Wow, it's a really good question. Yes, I will build um, a huge building and three a small building and a diner 
and um, the big building uh, I will just make in the big building um, a place for just for girls to uh, play is for it to have the PlayStation and have computer and have mobile to play and a gem for them just for for the girls and uh, I think uh, in my country I uh, I will not allow boys to get in. <laughs> I will, oh, I will you're going to turn it the other way. <laughs> I will make everything just for girls. No, no, no. I, I'm kidding. But <laughs> I will make another building for the mix between boys and girls. Uh, and um, that's it. Uh, yeah, I will make a track to have cars, yeah, to compete with cars. For, uh, running, love... for running or driving? Driving. Okay. Formula, like formula, yeah, Ooh. compete, yeah. I, I like I like this, yeah. Okay, I love it. Yeah, my city so, would be cool. Your city sounds very cool. Um, yeah. So we also ask students to build the flag of each the flag of the country that they're in. And so I'll just share quickly. This is hard to see a bit because the background is black. And so you can't see the bottom of it very well. Wow. But is this the, this is the flag of your country, right? Yeah. This flag of my country. Yes. Yeah. And so um, I'm learning as I'm looking this up, that the flag of Egypt uh, has three equal blant Bands. It dates back to the 1952 Egyptian Revolution, and the the national emblem, the Egyptian eagle, is in the center. Yes. Um, and it says the red band symbolizes the Egyptians' blood in the war against colonization. Yes. The white band symbolizes the purity of the Egyptians' hearts. I have certainly experienced that with you. <laughs> the black band below the white symbolizes the manner in which darkness is overcome. Yes. Yes. That's, that's amazing. And so in Mina Craft, students will build a replica of the flag where they are, and then they do a little bit of research and send videos in where they talk about what they learned. And it's been um, just so fun to see what students create. Yes. And, um, you know, and to have them describe it. A lot of times we don't even know the symbolism behind the flags where we are. I live in the United States, but I live in the state of California and I didn't grow up here. So I learned about the flag of Nevada, which is where I grew up. And someone recently was describing the different symbols on the California flag. And I had no idea what they were there for. So it's fun <laughs> to look into these things and to learn these things for yourself. Yeah, it's really fun. And then the last uh, challenge, there are sort of two parts to it. One is to build a marketplace or a souk. And then the, the final aspect of that is once you build it all out in Minecraft, then you sort of do a tour, like be a tour guide and go through and show all the things that are in the marketplace or the bazaar or the souk that you visit. So... Tell us a little bit, Nora, if we were in Egypt and we were wandering through. First off, what do you call a marketplace like that where you live? Supermarket. Supermarket. Okay. Yes. So a supermarket. Okay. And so if you're wandering through the supermarket, what kinds of things would you see in Egypt? Oh, in Egypt. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking more of an outdoor market where we would go, where they would have... Like we would call it a farmer's market. No. And you would have some fruits and vegetables that people grow locally. But then also there are people selling homemade crafts that you could buy. And there's always someone playing a guitar with the guitar case open for you to give them donations and that kind of thing. <laughs> um, so that's you know, what I picture. Yeah, no, no. We, we don't have a lot of things like this in here in Egypt. Mm -hmm. um, we don't support this a lot. Uh, if anyone wants to play guitar just play in his room not not in mm. the uh, public yes and 
we not yeah we not have like made uh, handcraft and sell it and supermarket we just find the the main things that every every house needed but there is literally there there is so many organizations support this uh women's and uh, the families to make uh this handcraft and sell it but in their um in their places not in supermarket and i think it's it's growing but not so fast not too fast yeah. mm -hmm. so carolyn i know that you visited jordan um did you get a chance to go to any markets there what were those like um yeah i mean there was a, there's one i vividly remember it's like pretty big and it's just like in the street there's a lot of like little trinkets that you can buy little things that you know you can take home souvenirs um but yeah it was, it was huge um and i loved it so i bought a lot of stuff to bring home <laughs> oh that's good of course <laughs> <laughs> That's always fun. Um, and how about the food? Did you, were there different types of food there to um, not just fruits and vegetables, but, you know, I want lunch. I'm hungry. I'm going to look around and see what to eat. Were there a lot of places to eat prepared food also? Yes. The yeah, there was. I don't remember all the dishes, what they were named though, but yeah. I like them. <laughs> yeah. I remember being in London once and they have a huge market that's um, it's not underground, but there's a big bridge over the top of it. And right where you go down the stairs into it, there's someone making paella, which is a Spanish dish that has um, sausage and tomatoes and spices and shrimp in it. And they had, uh, I mean, they were making it in this, you can't see my hands. I think the skillet they were cooking in was probably six feet like two meters across this huge thing they were stirring up and there were all kinds of things being sold there but I can smell it right now even <laughs> just thinking about it and I think that's a fun thing about the markets and what we're trying to have students do as they build these out is to help others experience what it's like to be in a different place and to yes. see you know things are different um, I loved one of the students last semester um, said it his he had a solar vendor so in the united states solar power is very popular and there are lots of companies trying to sell you solar panels to put on your house for your power and i laughed because i you would not think of going to a place with fruits and vegetables and you also could buy solar panels for the top of your house to capture sunlight but they're everywhere and it was it was just a really good snapshot of what it actually is to be at a market in the United States. So I'm hoping that students will see this and Nora, maybe some of your followers will see this and be interested in joining us in Mina Craft. Um, it's a really fun way to get to explore a little bit of your own culture and your own history and document that. But then also at the same time to learn about other histories and cultures of people from you know, different states and from different countries in the MENA region. Um, so I just wanted to share because we asked Salwa what she would build. She's a student that's joining us. And she said her fondest memories are of Egypt. She's from Egypt. She lives in Brooklyn now, but she's from Egypt. And she said, uh, my fondest memories of Egypt are of Ramadan at my grandparents' house. I would build a warm scene surrounding the table of food, prayer room, family, lanterns, and people coming together outside and celebrating. Yes. It's really what a, good. What a wonderful description. I can picture that. I can picture yes. that. Thank you for sharing, Salwa. That sounds wonderful. Um, well, Nora, uh, anything that you want to add? You're such an inspiration for girls. And hopefully also you're opening the eyes of some boys to say, you know what? That's a real person that I'm talking to when I say those things, or when I say, go get back in the kitchen. That is a strong woman with ideas and vision. Um, and so I'm hoping that maybe you have personalized that a little bit 
to help people reflect before they make those comments. But um, I'm just, we've talked a lot about that. I'm just wondering, you know, we have students watching this. What is your advice to a student as they move through school and then on into the big wide world? Yeah. Uh, first thing I will speak to the girls. I hope I make just one girl aspire to um, make her goals to be in esport. And don't think, don't even think in the negative comment and don't see what other people think. Just believe in yourself and just do what you love. If you love to be a pro, a pro player and uh, combative in in esport just do this just believe in yourself and don't look don't even look to any bad comments any toxicity anything uh, will make you uh just don't want to move on in your in your goal but i will speak to boys just accept that we are the half of this community. We are here. We are what we want to uh, approve that we are good. Accept what we like, what we love, what we want to do. Uh, don't look to the gender. Just I'm a player like you. Uh, I want to be uh, a pro player. I want to be here. Accept, accept what we are, what we want. Um, don't eat, don't be toxic and don't say the bad comment to other girls. This how we will build a good community, a good players for the second second uh, year. And everyone will be competitive. Just look to to the girls that she is she is the half of this world. And we have the rights to be in here in esport the competitive and have fun just if we want to have fun in games not to be a pro player just accept what we want what we love that's it i hope every everyone uh, good luck and in in a craft too that's wonderful i'm going to add i'm going to read a comment um from sawa said that at her minecraft club She's at John Dewey High School in Brooklyn, has all kinds of people. We work hard to create an inclusive environment, especially for something like a gaming club. And we're proud that women, LGBTQ and POC, people of color students, make up the majority of our club. It is so important that less represented groups are advocated for in such spaces. And that's so true. I love, um, I love that thought of being an advocate not just doing the right thing yourself, but let's also be advocates for others in, in what we're doing. So um, I'm, I'm just going to ask one more question, Nora, because we, we spent some time sharing with you about NASAF and about yes. our programs and philosophies. Just tell me what's your impression of NASAF and um, any advice for people around the world as they're looking to join esports? and especially the scholastic aspects of esports regarding NASA. Wow. Um, I love to be with you guys, you and Gerald, and you teach me well, and you will have a big smile that make me that, oh, wow, uh, there's some people support the, the players, support everyone. They didn't see that I'm a girl, I'm a boy. Uh, no, they give me all the advice. You guys give me all the information I need. You you didn't take, um, just like you have these faces. No, you always smile. You always, I'm very, very happy when I was, with you i just want all the days workshop not no i don't want to compete <laughs> nora came I'm to just... every workshop that we led it was fantastic yeah. i felt like we had a fan club <laughs> it was great <laughs> yeah I, I just want around you you teach me uh you give me the the first step to yeah i'm in the right way i'm not just have this ideas in my mind no i have a right way to be in esport. I am in the right way. You, Clara, it's in 
you said I inspire you, know you inspire me. Yeah, you totally inspire me to complete my goals, to reach my goal, to be in this um, industry of esport. Um, my advice to all the the students that take all the information from here and build your career and don't uh, don't waste your time just take every single moment in this program to just build your career to the next next years and i think esport is the very beautiful field to work in it's inspired it's um good fun competitive it's it's a lot of things uh, i just lost my words yeah <laughs> but uh, but it's it's really good to be with you guys in here and in bali it's very very beautiful you you help me in these days uh, and i don't find anyone to speak with but i just find you and gerald and you were very 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 friendly with with me and i feel like wow i'm a star you and support me like i'm the only girl in the in this competitive and this competition but you you, you treat me well very very well really well i nora knows this but it was it was a funny coincidence when we were together that out of the blue, my daughter starts texting me Instagram posts about visiting Egypt. <laughs> said, we need to go visit Egypt. And I said, funny thing, I have just the person to take us on a tour. And I do plan to do that, Nora. We are going to come and we are going to see the sights and we are going to eat the food and do all of those things. Um, you are just a wonderful inspiration. And the support that you just described, I just want to say, we are here to do that for every person for every student around the world, for every competitor. We want this to be a safe place, a productive place, and that is our mission. So if you're a kid and you're in school and you wanna join us in the short term in Mina Craft, I'm just gonna show you really quickly how to do that. Um, you go to our website, which is nasef.org, and then up on this menu on the top, you'll see play, and you're gonna choose Minecraft competitions. And then you're going to come on down here and select Mina Craft. And from there, it's very simple. You just register. Uh, we will help match you up with a leader in your area if you don't have one. And the registration does have to happen by an adult advisor at your school uh, because we really want to protect the privacy of our students. So we'd never ask for email addresses or even first and last name of students. We just want the teachers to collect it and then have a teacher say, hey, I have five students who are in a club who are going to join. So registration is really simple. And then um, we have all kinds of additional speaker series going on. We have the challenges that we discuss. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And there's a team guide that outlines everything. If by chance you're at a school or a location that does not have, if you don't have Minecraft Education Edition, we provide it free. So it's free to join and you get the software for free. So um, really hoping that we have more students join us. And Nora, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being here. It's wonderful to chat with you. Carolyn, thank you for hosting and doing the behind the scenes and sharing a little bit of your experience as well. And uh, we will see you all again soon. Thanks for joining.